Hi, welcome to another tutorial. Uh, this one's about the, the CNC, they call it a CNC router single axis stepper motor driver board. This one's got the uh, Toshiba TB6560, meant to be rated at 3.5 amps. So, a uh, quick demo how to get it going, uh, what you need. Um, they cost about £12 from China on big auction site. So uh, I'll give you a rundown. I've got it running. Let me uh, show you the stepper motor. You see this is the uh, stepper motor from the earlier revs per minute demo earlier today. Right, so I've got a um, 24 volt power supply. A uh, pick microcontroller with one output, just giving us a clock pulse. That's running on uh, 4.85 volts NIGAD. Uh, I've got in circuit zero uh, programming, which is what that is. Uh, so, one clock pulse, a 5 volt enable, and a 5 volt supply coming to here. Let me uh, get you back in focus. So right, there's a conventional stepper motor, as you've seen in the other tutorials. That's the uh, Honeywell magnet and Hall Effect IC, that Hall Effect sensor, just using as a counter, RPM counter. So there's the four stepper motor wires, yellow, red, blue and green. Try and get you all in shot. Right, so what we've got are some 24 volts in on the red and black. Black's obviously the earth, red's the 20 volt, 24 volt in. Four stepper motors uh, wires, so you can see B plus, B minus, A plus, A minus. Uh, doesn't matter the orientation of each. Um, and what else have we got? We've got the step, direction, enable and 5 volts, so 5 volts in uh, presumably for this chip. The enable has to be 5 volts to start, whether it has to stay on there or not, I'm not sure. You can actually disconnect it, if I disconnect it now, it's still running, but so I'll keep the 5 volts on. So 5 volts for this, 5 volts enable to turn it on. The step is a clock cycle, which I'll show you in a minute. The direction I've left disconnected it's going one direction. If you ground, in fact I'll ground it now for you. You've got to have a common ground between this and the microcontroller, otherwise it won't work. So ground the direction. And you'll see the motor goes the other way. Take the ground off and it stays running. Let me reset it. Is that right? Yeah, ground. Makes it go the other way. Take it off. Back to normal. So you can run the direction to your microcontroller and just ground this pin if you want it going the other direction. Right, these switches and got them in shot. Right, if we we'll go through these simple ones first, these are the torque controls. So it's running at uh, lowest torque at the moment, which is seems to be all well, those one, two, three. This one seems to be the lowest torque. Then you can add this one, which is medium, and then that one, which is maximum torque. If you put all three on together, uh, that's maximum torque for the motor, should you require it. So I'm, if I knock these off, that motor's drawing about 100 milliamps at the moment. Putting all three on is drawing 800 milliamps. And it's, I cannot stop it easily just by grabbing the top. I'm not a magnet. Well, so that's your torque control which limits the current. Uh, these switches here, um, one and two, I mean, it says on this board here, one and two, I believe, do the lag. Uh, and five and six, 
think I can't see it from this direction. The important ones are a 3 and 4, they um, divide the signal down, so I've got it set on the slowest at the moment, if I speed it up. Right, this is the signal coming in um, and it's been unmodified by 3 and 4 being uh, left switched on. If you turn 3, 4 off, the 3 on, that's dividing it by 16, you'll see down there. That's dividing it by 16, then we'll look, I believe it's 8, 4, 1, and then that's again unmodified. Uh, I think that's it. So let me just show you the wiring that I can. Get rid of that. There's the wiring that I can. Hopefully that's all on. Well you can see 24 volts in, ground, same ground for the microcontroller, 5 volts into the microcontroller. This is a step, so it's literally a clock signal. I've got it set to one millisecond uh, on, one millisecond off, so on and so forth. For the small motor you can drop it down to 500 microseconds, or some of the bigger motors that require minimum one millisecond, otherwise you just get a high pitch squeal from it. Motor phases, yeah, step, direction, as I say, if you leave it disconnected, it goes one way, connected to ground, it will go the other. 5 volts enable into this board and 5 volts into this board. Uh, your torque settings, uh, 3 and 4, divide the clock input. I think that's it. Going to be the quickest video yet. And this. So you can forget ABC, but so I've just left my thing running on just one output. That's the uh, signal from earlier. So I'm, so it's turning on D, pausing for one millisecond, turning it off, and it's going back round. So I've got one millisecond on, one millisecond off. That's what I've got going into that stepper motor board. And obviously pin three and four, divide that time down again. Hopefully that all makes sense. Um, lock this camera off. I think that's it. Yeah, I think the um, <coughs> excuse me, the it says about decay. So pins one and two decay for the signal. Um, it's for the matching different impedances on different stepper motors. So that's five and six. So they have little effect on this motor. This, uh, more, incidentally, I was running this motor and it didn't like the speed changes and clock changes, so that's why I chose to keep on this small one. Uh, this one's got measured 2.5 ohms coil resistance per phase, and this one was 5.5. But, so this one runs happily. As I said from the other videos, just wire up the phases, leave the red and white yellow and white disconnected, just want the outside phases. Um, yeah, so 5 and 6 is a lag, 25, uh, 0, 25, 50 and 100% or decay, they call it. Uh, is it excitation mode? Was that, that's that uh, the 3 and 4? Yeah, that's dividing the clock. Uh, switch one, two, and three of the torques. Little graph here. What to do? Um, I'll then talk again on. And that's five and yeah, five and six. One and two are the like, decay. Five and six are the torque. 